Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born as a legendary Saiyan. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osu stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part we discussed how the tournament of destroyers went on. Everything went pretty much the same way but with different characters and tournament rules until Vegeta and Hit were the last fighters and they fight it out. In the end Vegeta displayed a very big brain as he pretty much skipped ahead of Hit's time skip and defeated the assassin. Beerus wished his brother a copy of the already existing earth and they went on with their lives. After a while, they just seemed to chill out and it was all going very good up until Trunks came by in his time machine. Trunks punched his father but didn't yet quite realize that he's in the past, so he goes on to explain what's going on. But just then, a rift opens as we see a potentially new foe our Saiyans will have to deal with. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. From the rift out comes a person looking pretty much exactly like Vegeta and this person just looks on to what's around him. He looks on to see Vegeta, Broly, Trunks, Future Trunks and Fasha outside and comments on them being there, finally realizing this is the past timeline. Future Trunks elaborates how this is what they call him is Vegeta Black and he is the reason why he fled back in the past timeline in the first place. Goku and Raditz arrive as well, see future Trunks and then Vegeta Black, getting confused as to what's going on. Vegeta explains the whole situation to them and they seem to have understood. Future Trunks then elaborates about how this Vegeta Black foe managed to destroy half of the Earth and kill almost everyone and everything that existed on that planet. Before Trunks could continue, Black interrupts, saying that he came to kill him so he doesn't have to bother with the resistance in the future. Vegeta, satisfied with what he has to hear, goes to fight Black to see where he stands against him. Vegeta appears in front of Black and they share a small conversation before Black surprise attacks Vegeta, but Vegeta managed to escape the blast, appearing next to Black. Black tries to grab hold of Vegeta, but Vegeta grabs him and headbutts him a few times before kicking him into the ground. Black notices Vegeta doesn't use his fancy legendary Super Saiyan, but also notices a huge power increase from within, going back into the fight. He rushes in to see Vegeta is going to be able to handle him this time, but Vegeta simply appears from underneath Black, punching him in the gut so hard Black has trouble breathing. Vegeta doesn't stop however, rather he continues on with the rampage, landing blow after blow on this counterfeit. At this point Black is completely defenseless and tries everything he can to run back to the rift, but Vegeta is simply not letting him go. The rift starts reacting as Black gets pulled back through time into the future. Vegeta, rather angry, falls down due to power consumption from fighting Black. Trunks realizes he fought Black in base throughout the whole battle and began to strongly believe that Vegeta can defeat himself after all. Vegeta then stops Trunks' thoughts by asking how was their fight compared to when they two fight, and Trunks replies they were about equal. Vegeta states that every Saiyan present right now can take on Black at this point. Since they had a working time machine, all they needed is fuel. Boma opened the canister and looked inside to see something familiar, so she gets to the lab. Meanwhile, Beerus and Whis arrive there telling the future kid that time travel is against the rules of the gods and that he has a life taking sentence if someone found out. However, he decided to let it slide if he was fed some tasty food. With Beerus now fed and satisfied, they think about what they should do for when they get to the future. Just then, Boma comes with a full tank of fuel ready to go. However, our Saiyans are not, demanding a table full of food. When Boma berates them for eating in another timeline, they elaborate with how they don't want to eat it, rather give it to the survivors. Once that was over with, with the help of Fasha, 
Trunks thanks his mom, Vegeta grabs a few Senzu and a capsule from Bulma. And from there, Trunks, Vegeta, Broly, and Goku depart into the future. Upon arrival, they see the carnage and no shit went down in this timeline. And they now know exactly what Trunks went through and Vegeta comforted him, seeing how bad everything looked. They all arrived at the base and Vegeta pulled out the capsule he was giving, revealing that big ass table full of food. With that, they exit the base and give a warm welcome, exposing their location. Black actually, literally, automatically appears right above them and looks upon them. Goku is feeling kind of tipsy as he turns blue and rushes black. At first he's doing good until he gets stabbed right in the chest, dropping out of his Super Saiyan Blue and falling on the ground. Black then went ahead and displayed something he has got, transforming into Super Saiyan Rose. And it took a while for everyone present to actually comprehend what they're seeing. Vegeta then goes blue and rushes at Black, trying to claim his point, but he gets put down too. Broly then uses his brains and uses a solar flare to blind Black, but to no avail as he gets sensed by Black mid-rush and put out of commission as well. Trunks then tells them to go back to plan the attack, and well, they do. Upon return, they get berated by Bulma and Beerus alike, not being able to finish the job first try. Vegeta, Goku and Broly then go train in the time chamber, planning their next move and training accordingly. They eventually force their way out of the chamber since they were in there for nearly 3 years and mostly forgot about the whole thing, but at least their goal is clear as day. When they go back in the future, once there are Saiyan see another person next to Black, which Vegeta recognizes being a Supreme Kai and questions him. It turns out it's Zamasu and he has the same ideology for mortals and how all mortals should be destroyed. Vegeta, getting impatient, just appears in front of Black and gut punches him hard enough he spits out a whole lot of blood. Broly takes on Zamasu and Goku waits for an opening to Black. Vegeta is manhandling Black so easily all he needs is a Super Saiyan God for it, having trained a whole lot in the time chamber. Zamasu also has a very hard time with Broly, naturally. Seeing how Black is getting beaten up, he puts up his Patara earring on the other side and the fusion begins. Merged Zamasu appears and challenges Vegeta alone, feeling quite confident of himself. Vegeta accepts the proposal and rushes Merge Zamasu without second thought. What he doesn't know is that they're fused and it'll take more than brute force to destroy them. Vegeta then goes legendary Super Saiyan Blue and continues his rampage and actually surpasses Merge Zamasu, but realizes he isn't taking much damage. Broly covers it by saying that Zamasu wished for an immortal body and Black wished for Vegeta's own. Vegeta asks for an explanation and Merge Zamasu elaborates how he killed every single living being, including his wife and a kid. At this point we see Vegeta more fired up than ever, berserk even. He powers up so high he loses all sense of reason he has for a split second, going berserker blue. This berserker isn't really fully berserk, but enough for Vegeta to feel no remorse for the opponent right in front of him. Think of it as someone transforming into a Super Saiyan for the first time using Rage. His new form looks like his normal legendary Super Saiyan but with an addition of a Super Saiyan Blue Aura. His power is like those two forms mixed together into a perfect mix of raw and uncontrollable power. Vegeta, now berserk, literally mobs the floor with Merge Zamasu, having no need for their plan they worked so hard on making it real. Merch Zamasu becomes very corrupted, but still confident. Vegeta senses the drop in power from within, so he goes back to base, pretty tired out, and just drops on the floor unconscious. Goku and Broly now know what to do. Goku goes Kaioken times 20 mixed with his Super Saiyan Blue, and Broly starts preparing an attack, going blue himself. Zamasu rushes at both of them, but it's too late as Broly fires a technique similar to the evil containment, but it freezes people in place instead of sealing them, as Goku is preparing a massive Kamehameha to throw at Zamasu. 
The Kamehameha connects and Merge Zamasu disappears from existence. Or so they thought. It's now over as Zamasu appears in the sky, beginning to form a kind of a body created from rocks, concrete, metal and such to transfer himself into his new and artificial body. They then realize he's quite literally immortal and that he can't be destroyed. Vegeta, hearing that while being mostly unconscious, wakes up. Goku notices this and goes to help Vegeta get up, giving him a sense of being to restore his power. Vegeta notices the complete lack of energy from now new Zamasu, missing half of his initial strength. Vegeta has no time to waste as he applies the fruits of his training with Whis as he prepares a strange purple and black key ball, going along with a slight purple aura outline. Broly immediately recognizes what Vegeta is doing and distracts Zamasu, although himself lost most of his energy. Vegeta then goes into his legendary Super Saiyan Blue and throws the ball. Zamasu finally acknowledges Vegeta and his big ass destruction ball heading right towards him at an incredible speed. Zamasu has no time to dodge and gets engulfed in the blast. Zamasu begs for mercy and pleads to be spared, but Vegeta gives no shit as he says the magical word, making the blast destroy Zamasu and his soul deteriorating him from the inside out, before exploding with a brilliant flashes of light. Vegeta is worn out again and catching some air for a bit, but not as much as you'd expect. Trunks also wakes up after eating the dirt during the battle and senses no Zamasu or Black. Vegeta then asks Trunks to take him back as he has some business to deal with, while the Saiyans agree. Back in the present timeline, Broly asks for Beerus. Fasha explains how they went into another universe to investigate something. Just then, Beerus and Whis come back, clueless. Vegeta sheds some light on the situation they were in and explain everything. Having to go back and get rid of Zamasu, Vegeta goes along with Whis and Beerus to Universe 10. Beerus gets rid of Zamasu after proving the fact he tended to do harm and they went back home. But as you might have guessed, no peace lasts forever in the Dragon Ball franchise as I Shinkan has realized what happened and decided to react. And with that, we're we'll leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I don't deserve any donations, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out. Jesus fucking Christ, 2020 just can't get the fuck out of our law, can it?